Welcome to That's Good for Footy. everyone, how are you? Oh, look at all those smiling faces. Hey, great to be here. Welcome to the Italian Sports Club in Werribee. Welcome to the Collingwood Night. I was just out there, you know Sandy, Sandy's on the door, and she's laughing her head off because I'm standing to make Mason Cox. I don't know what's so funny about that. Um, she seems to think thinks it is absolutely hilarious. Um, but uh, you'll see why in a second anyway. But uh, I just wanted to say welcome to you all. Um, first of all, Merry Christmas. I hope you all uh, have a great Christmas and a wonderful new year. But we're here to uh, have some fun with the Collingwood boys tonight. Let's get stuck in. Welcome to That's Good for Footy. This is the family-friendly live and interactive footy panel show. This is where the fans meet the players and the players meet the fans. The shows are for the passionate supporters. The show which allows you to see the players be themselves. I'm ready. Let's go. Collingwood show, December the 20th. Five days till Christmas. All right. Be on your best behaviour, everyone. Please welcome to the show our first panellist. He was born on the 8th of May in 1996. He's played a total of 74 games and he has kicked a total of six goals. He made his AFL debut in 2016. When he plays for the Collingwood Football Club, he wears a premiership medallion around his neck and the number 37 on his back. Could you please welcome to the stage, Oliver Markov. <laughs> What was better, your rendition of that song or his? That was absolutely fantastic. Isn't it great to see that smile out here? Huh? Firstly, mate, welcome to your, uh, your first That's Good Footy panel show. They're a little bit different. You'll see that as the night goes on. It's like warming, you know, an old man into a warm bath. As soon as you get your head around it, you'll be okay, all right? Um, how are you? How's everything? Um, yeah, great analogy. Um, yeah. No, uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm going well. I, I just came back from Orwell, which was good fun. Um, we, we had a blast there. It was always good to change the scenery, get out of the city for a bit. Um, it's funny, I've got the big troop carrier, so whenever I drive around the city too much, it's got the uh, the oil light on. Um, but the moment you take it out in the sticks, it's, uh, it seems to be running like an absolute uh, a gem. So yeah. it's beautiful nice. to get it out and about. Nice, nice. And are you enjoying this period right now? The, uh, let's say, the, the, the post-celebration period? Uh, I've, I'm done celebrating. <laughs> I, um, I was pretty drunk for about six days straight. Um, chose not to be hungover, so I just woke up, kept drinking. Kids, oh. don't don't listen to me. <laughs> Cover your ears yeah. over there. I see yeah, you yeah. three. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But no, I um, again, we're, we're we're back to work now. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying this bit because we just had our last big session, yeah. go to Christmas, yeah. and uh, in three weeks' time I'll be back training, working hard again. How good's that? Love it. Excellent. <laughs> Wonderful. Nice to have you here, mate. Welcome along to the show. Uh, let's get our second panellist out here. I know you're all hanging out to meet him. Uh, he was born on the 14th of March in 1991. He's played a total of 113 games. He has kicked a total of 117 goals. He made his AFL debut back in 2016. When he plays for the Collingwood Football Club, he also wears a premiership medallion around his neck and the number 46 on his back. Could you please welcome to the stage, Mason Cox! <laughs> Well done. Well done. 
thanks to everyone for getting involved in that. It always makes the players feel so wonderful because it's the first time they've heard that song in probably, what, I don't know, four hours, you know. So, wonderful. Um, Mason, um, Oleg was just alluding to the fact you've just been down in Morwell. You've had a little bit of uh, entertaining the troops down there. How's that period been for you? Uh, it's been pretty amazing. We were actually matched up, so we got to go into the community together, which was pretty yep. cool. Okay. Um, and we got to go to a ton of different places, uh, give back to the different schools and whatnot, which is awesome. So... Uh, we went to a special place I'll shout out called Fish Creek, and um, unfortunately I had, uh, yeah, I don't know if anyone knows Fish Creek right here, yeah? <laughs> they've won like, uh, what was it, like 60 37? or 80 like championships, right? Yeah, like super yeah. successful club, and they've unfortunately had their, um, clubhouse their like, burned clubhouse down. burned yeah. down. Yeah, and we, had, uh, we went over there and showed up and uh, just offered a bit of support and whatnot, yeah. got to see the community. So that. it's like, it's those experiences that yeah. you really get a lot from and yeah, you just kind sure. of see how amazing football is and how Giving it kind back. of binds the whole community yeah. which is pretty amazing nice nice excellent mm. um, without too much further ado what I want to do boys I'm going to get stuck in I want to ask a little bit about what's uh, maybe leading up to the grand final the grand final what it's been like afterwards and how you're going moving forward alright so Mason you've just recently come back from visiting family and friends in the States tell us what it was like going back home a premiership player yeah, pretty crazy. I brought the medal around and um, fortunate enough to go to some like NBA, NFL, NHL, um, the F1, which was pretty cool. So wow. I got to show around some people that are like connected to Australia that play in those different sports and stuff. Yeah, and wow. um, it's got a weird power to the medal. Yeah. You know, it's a weird yeah. thing. It's like, we'll want to get you a key to any place in Melbourne, which is pretty yeah. wild. But um, even over there, some of the people you meet and some of the things you do, it's... Um, it definitely holds a bit of a weight that I didn't probably understand okay. until I kind of went overseas and yep. have come back now. Yep. Um, and just kind of how much it means to different people. It's, it's pretty amazing just yeah. the... You know, once you win a premiership, I guess the, uh, you know, how much you realize just how committed people are to the club yeah. and how much yeah. like people are like, oh, it's the best day of my life. I'm like, dude, your two kids are sitting next to you, mate. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's, pretty, it's, been, it's been amazing. I wanted to ask you, uh, you've been in the system a while now, nine years, yeah. uh, and no doubt most people are familiar. And when I say most people, most people back home in the States are familiar with what you do now here in Australia. How did you describe grand final week to them? Yeah, it's backwards. Uh, it's, it's, and I mean this in the nicest yeah. way, right? So, like, in America, we do the parade after. Yeah. And I always find it weird that you do the parade before and then you don't really celebrate the team that wins in a parade, yeah. right? It's yeah. kind of, I don't know if anyone's thought about this, yeah. but, like, it's point. kind of a weird ordeal that you kind of celebrate the teams in the grand final. And then once you win it, there's not, like, a parade or celebration <laughs> with the fans after. Like, yeah. I think we had to go straight from the game to our club, which we're very fortunate is right across the street, because there was people like tearing down fences and everyone was like <laughs> partying their ass off. And I was like, I'm all for seeing this. So we had to go out to the balcony, acknowledge everyone, kind of say hi. And that was kind of as much of a parade, I guess, that you could say that we did. So <laughs> it's a bit different. It's yeah. a bit different here. That's good. I like that explanation. Uh, what was uh, more of a highlight for you, becoming an Australian citizen or being the first American to play 100 games of Aussie rules? Jeez, that's... Um, I think the citizenship. I'd okay. say... I know like, playing 100 games is awesome, don't get me wrong. Having the whole family here and everything else was amazing. Um, but there's something about being um, like accepted by a community. Okay. Um, and I think becoming an Australian citizen and having like, a physical passport from Australia. Like Whenever I go overseas and stuff, I actually show that. Because yeah, wow. I think it's way cooler. Like, I mean, like, how many people do you meet from Australia you know, in the world? Like, I guess it's a bit more rare than meeting an American. So yeah. I think that was quite special to me. Um, yeah. And I had an indigenous group that gave me a skin name and stuff like that too. So oh, I kind of got like this dual citizenship yeah. of not only American and Australian, but also from the indigenous group yeah. to say like, you know, we accept you also as part of us as the, the cool original owners of the land. So That's brilliant. That was pretty, pretty like, you know, I got a good goosebumps right now talking about it because it was pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, and I think that just meant a lot to me to be accepted not only from them but also from the wider community. That's brilliant. What a great answer. I love that. Um, cast your mind back to that. Um, yeah, thank love you. Love it, the clap. How good is that? <laughs> She, you, you just, she just can't stop looking at Oleg, is that it? No, he said he's got goosebumps, so the place he looked when he's looking at you. Oh, yeah. right. Is okay. that true? He's, 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 just, he's just double checking. <laughs> he did have goosebumps, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, um, cast your mind back uh, to that game. It was round 11. You're playing your 100th game. How wonderful was it to have mm. your parents and two brothers in the stands? Apart from the fact that you won that game, was there any tinge of disappointment that it was only against North Melbourne? Um, oh, oh, oh. We respect all of our opposition. Um, I think Steele and I were probably licking our lips. That was North Melbourne a bit, but um, 
Yeah, it was. I'll tell a funny story from that, right? So my my father has become a bit of a celebrity in this place, right? Like a lot of people know him. He's, he's an amazing human. Yes. And I'll never forget. There's a because it was my hundredth game. They gave access to my family before the like before the game into the change rooms. Okay. And then, like people don't really get that, right? And my yeah. dad. I'll never forget. I go, hey, just to let you know, like you have to come into the change rooms before. He goes, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. And I was like, you're in Australia. You've flown half a world away <laughs> to be here. Like you're. Shut up. You're going to be there. Yeah. He's like, well, I've got to catch up with the cheer squad. I told him I'd be there. I told him I'd help out. I told him I'd help out with it. I don't know if I'm going to have time. I'll have to talk to them, make sure it's okay. I was like, I, I, I didn't really ask. It's a rhetorical question, Father. Like, you're going to be there. So that was, um, that was quite a funny like, little, I guess, tidbit from the 100 That's game. That's brilliant. But, yeah, I, I love, love him. He's an amazing human. And if you ever get a chance to meet him, he... Uh, he will love to talk to you about football, and he will love to talk to you about Collingwood for that hours. Is, that is fantastic. Uh, you can vouch for all that. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Obviously, we've got. It's some probably one of you he was talking to. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> every game he's there. Yep. Uh, he holds the banner like oh, legit. How good I didn't know this. At one really? game, I walk out. My mom and dad are on the left. And I'm someone, I think it was like Darcy goes, "Is that your parents out there?" And I was like, "Shit, I reckon that is my dad." And I was like, <laughs> He just loves what it. What are you doing? Is, well, yeah, I'm like, what, you know, are you, what, how'd you end up here? Like, yeah, that's like, great. I've got connections too. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're not the only one. Yeah, there you go. Um, you're, for Highland, you're from Highland Village in Dallas, Texas. A little bit of soccer and basketball in your junior years. Uh, you've most likely been asked this question ad nauseum. But why Aussie rules? What, what was the appeal for you? Uh, they found me. It's, yeah. a, it's a really crazy roller coaster of a story, to be honest. And mm. um, I've told a lot of tidbits and everything. I'm sure at some point I'll probably write a book and tell the full story. But yeah, um, yeah they, they kind of found me. Like it was a wild thing for me to be in the position for them to come to me and like, kind of offer for me to go to Australia. And it all started with an LA combine. And I was, mm. I was a broke college kid, right? Yeah. So I was eating like ramen noodles, five cent ramen noodles every night, yeah. sleeping in a dorm room with like, you know, a roommate. And um, this whole kind of thing like came out of nowhere. And I was like, okay, uh, you know, am I gonna have to pay for my flight to LA? They're like, no, nah, all expenses pay trip. And I was like, to me, I was like, oh, <laughs> this is living. <laughs> oh, is this? Um, so I took the free trip to LA, went to this combine, did really well, and they go, what are you doing tomorrow? And I was like, well, I'm flying back to I'm like, flying back to, to school to finish my degree I've worked on for five years. And uh, calling a football club was like, now nah, come back with us to the airport. We'll book your ticket to Australia at the counter and come back with us. And I was like, I've got two days worth of clothes. Like, what do you expect me to do? And um, it, that kind of like crazy storyline of that, that, that. And then I told them to wait for two, like two weeks, let me graduate, and then I'll be able to kind of take that opportunity. And um, a free trip to LA turned into a free trip to, to essentially Melbourne and then traveling Australia for about two weeks. And my brother, who became my interim agent, <laughs> um, he likes to call himself Jeremy McGuire. Yeah, yeah, so he's, uh, he's still waiting for his commission is what he says. <laughs> he gets enough free stuff from me, though. I'm like, mate, it's paid to pay itself well in full. So... Um, yeah, came out here for like two weeks and found out that Australian rules football was a real thing because yeah, I'd never heard wow. of it. Uh, I'd never heard of Melbourne, yeah. to be honest. So I'd only heard of Sydney and um, came over here and like found out there's, you know, real teams that had, you know, th tens of thousands of fans that go to games and stuff. And I was like, well, if there's this many fans that support teams, financially it has to be, you know, viable. Yeah. So... That was kind of the thing that you know got me across the line. Said, okay, I'll give up this mechanical engineering degree that I'd worked five years for, yep. uh, to go play a sport I'd never heard of in a place I'd never been with no one I knew. How amazing! How amazing! Mm. Beautiful. My man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could talk to this uh, to the, both these boys all night. I, I've, I've got limited time, obviously, but it's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Um, you debuted on April the 25th, Anzac Day, uh, 2016. Understanding how significant that day is to Australians and what it represents, you come out within, and within the first two minutes of the game, you take your first mark and you kick your first goal in AFL. Not a bad sort of uh, introduction to AFL. Bit of baptism by fire, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was an incredible experience. I mean, I was a year and a half into essentially hearing of the sport, and then to play on Anzac Day on such a big moment and big occasion, um, it probably didn't at the moment. I probably didn't understand it probably as much as I should have. Um, it was such a whirlwind of the family coming in town. It was the first time my whole family had been here at once, um, all of them. So I was just psyched that that was happening, um, and it just all happened within like three days. So it was a bit of a whirlwind. And I think back to the day now, and it's like Darcy Moore, who's like one of my best friends, uh, when I first came here, he was the one that kicked it into me. So there was a bit of a moment that he presented my jumper before the game to me. Um, so it was kind of this like beautiful kind of uni you know, universe coming back on itself kind of experience, um, which was incredible. And just I look back on it now, and like Craig McRae was 
a development coach at the time, which is kind of crazy at the same time to think of that. And he was the reason that I'm at, at where I'm at tonight or today. So there's so many things that happened in like that moment of kicking the first goal on Anzac Day. Like, I mean, I think back and probably I was, I was shaking like crazy. But even before the game, like I didn't even know the Australian national anthem at that point. So <laughs> I'm sitting there, everyone's belting it out left and right of me, you know, and everyone's on the serious face. And I'm just looking like at the TV going like, don't look like an idiot. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, the whole day played out to be an incredible experience. And I just kind of, you know, I guess launched the career from there. It's amazing. Uh, we had Stuart Sidebottom on the show a couple of weeks ago and still was talking about his first foray into the 2010 Grand Final. 19-year-old boy. Um, you know, wow, wins a flag. He didn't even really get to come on as a sub. Um, the circumstance was didn't get to appreciate it the way that you've just alluded to by your, you coming out and playing on Anzac Day, knowing the cultural significance that it means to Australians um, from all walks of life. Um, saying all of that, the opportunity now, it's been able to sink in and you've, you've furthered your career. Um, you'll get the opportunity again. I wanted to talk about a couple of career highlights. Uh, in 2018, you kicked five goals in the Queen's birthday game to win a best on ground. Same year, you kicked three goals in the prelim against Richmond, um, only to break their hearts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Just to give you a heads up, he was on Richmond's list yeah. at that time. So. <laughs> That's why I was looking that way and not that way. Um, the last thing that I wanted to allude I'm to, no though... I'm not <laughs> <laughs> What, though, in your opinion, has been your best career highlight out of everything that I've just spoken about? Man, there's, um, it's tough to put a finger on one yeah, thing. Yeah. Um, def- I mean, you can sit there and say the grand final this year and that moment of, I guess, like nine years of sacrifice and really giving everything up in life to come over here and play and to be able to experience the ultimate. Um, I remember sitting after the game and my parents said, you know, how do you feel? And I said, I just feel complete. Like wow. it's like such a it was such a big risk to come over here, yeah. do all this, learn this game, like make new friends, all this kind of stuff in life, and it was very tough in that sense. And um, to sit there and be able to hold the cup up and have a medal was like, you know, I was like sitting there going, how how good is life? Like I can't believe this actually happened. Like it's a full, the story's you know gone the full way around. Yeah. And like we had lost in 2018, and that was quite heartbreaking to lose by a kick, and then you win by a kick, and it's like there's so many little things that yeah. happen in life that kind of. You know, make you grateful for what you, you know, what you've experienced and what you've been given, and the opportunities that have kind of happened. So it's it's tough to put a finger on it, to be honest. Um, I think, jeez, oh, the Richmond game was pretty incredible. Um, <laughs> I was pretty, I was, <laughs> sorry, like it was pretty freaking fun. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that was the start of the USA chant, which has now become a bit of a a, a, a marquee of mine. Yeah. But um, Another story from that, like, I think the moment that probably sticks out the most is probably after the grand final, um, there was all this media chaos, right? And, like, everyone's grabbing people left, right, and center, and I just kind of went away, and I had my four family members on side, and we all just kind of had a moment to ourselves as the five of us. And um, any time that something like that happens, like, after the Richmond game, I used to walk up the race before the security doesn't allow you to anymore, but I used to walk up the race after games and just see an empty MCG and just take in the moment of like what just happened for every single game. You just never know when it's the last one. So there's something eerie about an empty MCG after, a, you know, a very energetic game of 100,000 people going crazy. And I remember I walked up there and um, I was on my own and my mom, I wasn't aware of it, but she had walked up the race and she stuck her arm like around me and she was just like, I'm so proud of you. You know, it's been an incredible like experience, what you've done and everything else. And like that moment sticks out in my head is one of those that like I'll never forget. For and sure. um, like my, my family and I, like we're very separated physically. Yeah. Um, but those moments I think bring us back together more than ever. So I think those are the ones that probably I think back to and those are the ones that kind of give me that sense of completeness, if that wow. makes sense, of just Absolutely wholesome does. wholesome stuff that happens in life. Yeah. Oh, mate, please put your hands together for amazing. <laughs> That was seriously wonderful, mate. Thank you for, for being so candid and thank you for sharing those moments. You can have a little rest now. I'm yeah. going to move, right. uh, uh, move over to Oleg. Uh, Oleg, uh, you've been uh, described a lot in late uh, in animal terms. He's a bit of a different cat or he's a good-looking rooster. Um, <laughs> since the mustaka was removed, the question is now, cat or rooster? Um, interesting. <laughs> um, I'll go cat. I like cat. cat. Yeah. Um, Roosters have got that like, kind of like a like a little bull thing hanging on, on their chin, a little bull chin in. Have men in black too? Anyone seen men in black too? No. Okay, I'll play on. Play on. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take that cat. as a yeah, I'll yeah, be cat. cat. All right, good. Uh, now tell us a little about uh, a little bit about you. I'll start. 
you fill in the gaps. Yep. Uh, born in Belarus, um, stints at uh, both Gold Coast and the Tigers, went to school in Adelaide, loved your athletics, particularly the high jump. Was it a desire or, or ambition at school to play AFL and did you actually think at that time that you had it in you? Uh, n no, no. Um, again, I, I started playing footy just because all my mates were... Um, if, if all my mates played soccer, I'd be probably at Real Madrid kicking goal. No. <laughs> Um, no, look, I, I was just, I was very thankful. I, um, so my old man was a professional pole vaulter and um, world champion. He went to three different Olympic Games and wow. um, it's, it's very impressive, his, his resume and, and what he was able to achieve. And yeah. the people he's got very close to him are, are very dear. Um, but again, there's, there's something about individual success and, and team success. And I was always a people person. I always wanted to fit in. And um, I guess for me, Happiness is only real when it's shared, and I, I really do believe that. And um, you know, you can have all the incredible individual accolades you can want, but um, there's something about getting together, sharing a, a laugh, um, sharing a smile, and, and sharing stories with with other people. And um, yeah, so it was it was sort of a no-brainer that footy was something that I wanted to do. And okay. I was fortunate enough that I ended up becoming okay enough to get drafted. Um, I've never really stood out. I think I had a lot of athletic traits. and um, But, yeah, I think it all started sinking in when I actually got overlooked in my first draft. And um, I remember I was miserable. You, you see all your closest friends get picked up um, and you miss out. And um, I just remember thinking, oh, look, I'm... Well, to be honest, it wasn't me. Uh, I'd like to take the credit for you know, facing hardship and resilience in, in a certain way. But I, I was pretty miserable for a, for a couple of weeks. Um, I felt like my world was done. But, um, yeah, my mum got me out of my room and said, look, you're, you're 19, you're going to your second year of uni. Um, there's a lot of things that are going to be a positive for you. And um, I think that was sort of the turning point in my footy journey where I thought, all right, well, I'm just going to enjoy it. Um, so it Impressive. went from, yeah, it went from being almost like a, I need to get to my dream, I've got to do this, and turned into a chore to, all right, let's just have fun. Yeah. And um, I almost cared less about it, and it allowed me to play well enough to get picked up as a 19-year-old. So, um, yeah, again, I, it's definitely something I didn't think of when I was playing marks up at yeah. school. Um, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that all my friends and um, at the time were playing football. Wow, release the purse strings and see what happens. Um, I asked that question particularly um, because I wanted to go into this. You've certainly grabbed the bull with both horns when the opportunity came your, came your way and, and obviously it was knocking on the door. You were prepared to go and train with Carlton, oh. right? To keep your career alive. <laughs> yeah. I had to throw that in just to get that reaction. You're prepared to go and train with Colton just to keep, you, keep your career alive. You were there for one day and you got the call up from the Pies that a spot had opened up. Thank you, Charlie Dean. You then debuted in round four and then played every game after, the, um, of, after that in season 2023. And now you're a premiership player with the Collingwood Football Club. Talk about sliding door moments. Yeah. 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 Well, um, well, it's funny. Jokes on everyone here because <laughs> Fly told me go go have a look at what's inside their four walls and come back to me after one session. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was all part of Fly's master plan. So um, it's going to come in handy in 2024, I can tell you. Yeah, that's a doozy. Yeah, well done, mate. I like it. Um, I wanted to ask you this. How are, it's not bad, is it? Um, I think Carlton's still asking for the kit back, <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> oh, look, it, it was Justin Leppich who did say, look, we know someone and they want their kit back. But there's, <laughs> there might be some truth to it, but I'd, I like to just think, look, that we park that and we move on. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I hate nice. Carlton. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, i got to ask this too. Your Mad Monday kit. Can you explain the Mad Monday kit and what it was? Oh look, I, I like to think I like to think I was a good enough player that I made the difference and things like that. And I'll tell you a funny story actually. And this is an incredible story for you kids. So there's a child here who's sitting backwards. I've got I've got something I'd love to tell you when you when you face a bit of a hardship in your life. Um, oh no no, actually it's not even hardship. It's when you get too ahead of yourself. So I um. For everyone who watched the grand final, I'm hopeful everyone here has watched it. If you've watched it, give us a cheer. Yeah. All right, so everyone watched it. So I, um, not often do I start on the ground. I've only started on the ground for two games of the year, and that was the Suns and the grand final. Super honoured. Thank you, Fly. Um, 
and, uh, and I got a few kicks early, I was involved in some tackles, and I came off on the bench and I sat down and I just remember looking up at the big screen and this never happens, but uh, I was leading at one stage the marks and the tackles. <laughs> so here I was. Stop and the game. I was like, oh, well, um, I'm going to start practising my Norm Smith medal speech. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then I think after that I had three touches. So um, <laughs> to all the kids here, never get ahead of yourself. Keep working hard. Be process driven. Do not think of the outcome. How bloody good is that? Put your hands together for that story. Well said. <laughs> oh, I love it. Never count your chickens. There's a, there's, a, there's a message in that for everybody. Um, I wanted to ask you, Oleg, um, how have you found your role off half-back? You give enormous scope to the structures and game plan with your run and carry out of defence. A spot you feel comfortable in? Uh, yeah, look, I, I think it, it's sort of a funny one because statistically I was... Um I accumulated more of the ball at the Suns. I, I, I was able to... I was sort of the number one running back and I feel like when I've come in here, sort of flies, messages were like, look, you're here to play a role, play our system. Um, you'll get rewarded sometimes and at times I got rewarded in in whether it may be touches, um, intercept marks and, and that, but at times it's just uh, making sure my opponent doesn't get the ball or at times releasing another player. So... I guess the best part about it is with our team, we're so flexible and if we need to send Nick back, he does come back. Um, so therefore, a few of us need to, you know, pick up the slack with defending. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I guess my, my role at times is, is just to release Nick so Nick can shine and um, get his eight-year, $8 million contract and, uh, and, and Leggy's here just, uh, yeah, chipping away. <laughs> He's a good shipper too. I like it. Um, I wanted to say you certainly look comfortable down at the club. I've seen a few of your antics across social media. Um, is this the happiest you've been playing football? Yeah, definitely. Um, it, it's sort of funny. I think it's because I'm I'm still a kid at heart. Like I'm I'm, I'm who knows if I'll become a I hope I become a dad. <sighs> Come on. Um, but um, yeah, I'm always going to be a son, and um, and I feel like I'm always going to have that inner child in me and. Um, I guess when my most joyful moments are uh, obviously another little life lesson for your kids over there. <laughs> Before you start paying rent, um, a mortgage, um, all your bills and, and that, and you don't have to worry about anything, you don't have to worry about cooking and at times cleaning as well, but you should always clean your room, yeah? Um, but enjoy it, like it's fun, it should always be like that and I'm just trying to um, latch onto that feeling for as long as I can um, nice. and I never want to lose sight of being a kid and um, I, I guess Collingwood as well, w within our four walls everyone's allowed me to be yeah. like that yeah. Um, and yeah, look, I'm, I'm, I'm just happy to annoy people to be honest, so <laughs> it makes me happy. Fantastic. Um, I told you before the start of the show, before the boys walked out here, that I knew it would be enjoyable to meet these two. That's just given you a great insight into who they are. Fantastic little stories. Thank you both for sharing that. Put your hands together for them. Well done, lads. All right. For those wondering, footy is back in 69 days. Um, some people... Yeah, some people may debate that that's not real footy. Not very immature. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Some people, yeah. I didn't even go there. That went whoosh. And most people that hope that went wish too. But anyway, um, some people may debate that that's, that that is not real footy. That doesn't start until round one, March fifteenth. I'm actually interested in what our guests have to say because your first hit out will be on February twenty seventh, which, as I said, is only sixty nine days away. No pun intended. Um, where Collingwood will take on Richmond at Icon Park. I'm pretty sure the fans will be out in force. Will you? Yeah, no, oh, yeah, I assume so. Um, yeah, no, we have a lot of the preseason game. Yeah, yes. so uh, we just today was actually our last day of training. So yeah. like we had our um, we today we we're out in Morwell. And we had a massive training session, running up hills and everything else. It's the hardest training session of the year. Uh, so they absolutely flog you, and then um, yeah, it's just a, it's a rough rough time. And then we're gonna get get to this point. We get about two or three weeks off. So I yeah. think now it's um, yeah, you recover, you get to spend some time with family and stuff over the uh, the little holiday break, and then yeah. once you get back, like. Season is upon you within yeah. a snap. So, yeah, um, yeah it's, it's, it seems crazy to think that it's, you know, three months away. Yeah. Um, you still kind of feel like you're on this high of the grand final at times, sure. you know, and things like that. But, 
Um, yeah, playing Richmond Icon Park, which is going to be unique because it's, oh, yeah. it's a bit of a weird thing to play at Icon Park against a team that's not Carlton. But um, yeah, it'd be good. I don't yeah. know, it'd be, it'd be yeah. fun. And it's, it's a great way, I think, for, you know, we've had a lot of guys that are SSP that have kind of been these guys that have helped us through training over the last little bit. We've got a couple draftees that have come through, and it's a great way to kind of expose them. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we've got TJ and Harry that we drafted, and those yeah. guys have been absolutely smashing it in training. So we're excited to kind of see them play on the big stage. You yeah. know, it's, um, it's a different thing to be playing in training yeah. and playing against an opposition that, you know, yeah. wants to kill you. So, um, yeah, and it's, it, I mean, these 18-year-old kids, and to, to get that kind of experience into them in these preseason games and stuff like that, it really kind of gives you an idea um, if they're really going to make it. Yeah. Like, it's a real good, you know, like I said, early baptism by fire of, yeah. of um, you know, chunking them up against some of the best. Yeah, nice, very well. Um, I wanted to go into this. Round zero um, has also <laughs> been announced. Uh, Pies will play G uh, GWS on their home deck Saturday 9th of March at 7.30pm. Mason, I wanted to know, what were your thoughts on that? What do you yeah. think about that? Well, I was in... Oh, jeez. Uh, I was in the <laughs> F1, and I made a comment around this. I said the oh, showgrounds were... Right. A place where cattle is shown or something like that, which is true. It's an honest truth. The Easter show is about three weeks before us. This is just, I'm just factual information. And GWS didn't take it so well. Um, particularly their GM, which Dave Matthews. Big fan of his artist. Big fan of Dave Matthews, the yes. artist, not so much. Uh, you're with Mix, yeah. But, um, yeah, so I, I, I wouldn't say it's a dig. I just pointed out a factual thing. And people took it as offensive. And, you know, that's on them. But, um, yeah, no, it was, it, was, it was just kind of like a funny thing to me because I always thought it was weird that we played at a showground. Like, I just, I found that phenomenal. And it's not like, every once in a while you kind of go out there and there's a few kind of like, you know, indentions in the ground stuff and you're thinking it's a hoof mark. Um, and it's just, it's just wild to me. It's crazy to me to think that we played it. It's so, it's so Australian is yeah. really the thing to it. Like, yeah. to play at a showground and, um, yeah, I, I made that comment. I, it got a bit of, uh, it got a bit of <laughs> in media and our, our GM. A little I bit guess, of traction. Yeah, a little bit of traction. I wasn't really aware of it because I was in America. Like, I was asleep. <laughs> like, I wasn't even, I was like, whatever. It was a hand grenade. Um, and then our GM texted me and was like, hey, it's getting a bit of traction, mate. Just take it back a bit. And I was like, yeah, fair call. Yeah, <laughs> right, thank you. So, point made. Yeah, point made. But um, yeah, it's quite fun. A little cheeky guy. But I love GWS. They get around that kind of stuff, right? Like, yeah. they have a bit of fun with it. And I love their social media Better. team. They're awesome. It's, yeah, it's good yeah. fun. And, um, yeah, I think, I don't know. I think most people know I'm, I'm not like a, a very serious person all the time. Yeah, I take yeah, the piss good. out of it when it comes to social media and stuff like that. So Absolutely. Hopefully it's all in, uh, you know. I wanted to speak to you about the fact that uh, you weren't aware of Melbourne when you were in the States, but you did know of Sydney. You probably haven't heard of a place called Tasmania, but there's a place in Tasmania called Queenstown. Queenstown. Yep. The actually, Gravel Oval. Yeah. yeah. I've been there. Oh, all right. Been there. Okay. Beautiful yeah. place. Yes, beautiful place <laughs> for about three or four minutes. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> the drive through. Um, nice to drive through, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's all right. We don't yeah, have to yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to allude to this. First 14 rounds of 2024 will feature a, a Thursday night game. Uh, Pies have got two Thursdays in there as well as five Fridays. Pies have got a dream run home as well with seven of your last eight games at the G. On paper, it looks like a great draw. Your thoughts, boys, on how much do you like playing Thursday and Friday nights? Uh, you want to take this one? Um, so you can share it amongst yeah. you Thursday and Friday yeah. nights and how much you like playing it and uh, have you got a dream run and are those um, Thursday and Friday nights games ones you uh, look forward to? Um, well, again, I think if we best prepare ourselves for, for battle. Um, I'm not sure why everyone's laughing. I was about to say something quite, quite inspirational. Quite yeah. Kids, listen up. Kids, listen up. I felt like Braveheart just then, but yeah, everyone's taking, <laughs> laughing at me. Um, no, I'd, I'd, again, we prepare well. Uh, any run's a dream run. But, um, again, I'm, I'm, I've played a couple of years at the Suns, and it's, it's not no disrespect to the Suns, but they, were, they had a lot of Sunday night or Sunday day <laughs> fixture ones. So it's quite nice having the weekend to do what you need. And, yes. um, yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoy Thursday and Friday nights because they tend to be the only game on that night. And um, that means... Everyone's able to attend. Everyone's watching from home. We get our army up and about. Yeah! <laughs> what, what other sounds have we got? Yeah, what else is on the DJ? What else is on the... Uh, yeah. I like the Very cricket good. one. Very nice. I like it, boys. Um, I'm playing devil's uh, advocate here, and it is purely a hypothetical question. But if you're fortunate enough to find yourselves playing in another final series, who's the one team you would like to uh, line up against and knock out of the finals? Oh, I think... 
<laughs> yeah, I think that would be. I told people this before, um, you know, before the whole finals series kind of came to about whenever Carlton made the finals, and they were kind of like on the opposite side of the bracket as we kind of went through, right? And I thought I said if if Carlton and Collingwood's in the grand final, the city of Melbourne's oh, going to yeah. burn no matter burn. what happens. <laughs> like, Either way, yeah, it's going to yeah. burn because Collingwood fans are pissed. Either they lost or they won, or they're going to be happy they won, or the same thing with Carlton. So that's why um, we don't have a parade when that happens. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. jeez, man, it'd be it'd be so. But this is the thing, though. Like, I love the rivalry of it because it gets people oh, so yeah. passionate about oh, it, right? Yeah. So, like, I can only imagine, and like, I feel like that's that's the maximum amount of energy you can get from an AFL <laughs> game is a Carlton Collingwood Grand Final, yeah. and like to experience that, oh. like, would just be insane. Like, I'm it would just be so cool. Out. Like, yeah. so. I, I would love to be part of that if yeah. that ever does happen. I'm not sure. But yeah. um, to me, it's kind of like the pinnacle of like yeah. energy at the MCG. Yeah. And it's like, man, if we could do that at some point yeah. and, you know, hopefully beat them, oh. um, it would be awesome. It would be crazy. Yeah. People would talk about it for years and it would just be an awesome experience in life. And yeah. it would be, be incredible. I hear you, man. I hear you. Uh, getting a bit of a, ahead of ourselves here. So let's go back a little bit. Whilst going forward from here, let's go to round one. This is proper football, uh, which is on Friday the 15th of March at 7.40 p.m. It's a new time slot. Um, MCG, Pies versus Swans. Bring it on. The big premiership flag unveiling. That will be pretty awesome. <laughs> 2024. Um, when does pre-season kick off in the new year for you, lads? When are you, when are you due back? Jeez, we're back. We should probably know this, but we just finished up today. So we're... Yeah, <laughs> last thing you want to think about yeah, is when, you, when uh, I'm back. I think we're back like the 12th or something like that, I want to say. Yeah. 11th? 11th. Yeah, yeah, 11th. I should probably know that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll be back to 11th. But yeah, playing Sydney, round one. I'm pretty excited. You know, Tay's obviously been transferred over there. Yeah. And my good friend Brody Grundy's been transferred over there, yeah. traded over there. So... Um, it's going to be fun. Like I, yeah. I love playing against the guys you're friends with. Yeah. It's like a weird feeling, yeah. but it's just hilarious to talk absolute dribble to them on the field. <laughs> like, I, was, I was still to this day, like whenever we played Melbourne last year with Brody, I was he had taken a mock. He actually kicked the goal, but I was talking that much trash to him on the way out. <laughs> and he, I talked to him after we had a little conversation. He's like, man, I was trying to keep it together so much. I just couldn't do it, man. I just couldn't do it. I was like, <laughs> so it's just like cool experiences you get to have with people that, you know, you've had shared experiences over the years. Yeah. And, um, you know, They've given a lot to our club to be able to kind of catch up with them, play against them. It's uh, it's a challenge, but it's good fun. Yeah, yeah it's good fun. Oh, it's exciting thinking about round one. Uh, I know, as I said, it's only 69 days until we're back playing uh, community football. But yeah, bring on the real season, I say. Um, I wanted to just say to you both, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Um, what sort of things will you be getting up to over this period, family-wise? Um, yeah, well, I'm I'm lucky because I was born obviously in Belarus, so um, <laughs> Russian Orthodox. Yep. Um, which means my birthday's on Jan the 7th. Yes. So I celebrate two Christmases. Uh, so to all the kids here, uh, have that. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, That's gold. Bro. <laughs> Am I allowed to do that? No. Yeah. Oh, you know what? No uh, one's saw no one saw Whoever's no. not orthodox, have that. I've got two Christmases. Um, make what you wish. What, what I was pointing. Anyway, um, but I'll be going to the Gold Coast for a period there, and uh, I'll be back for a Russian Christmas with my parents nice. um, to celebrate that and, and have my second uh, Christmas. Just uh, remember not to get too far ahead of yourself. That'd be good. Yep. Yeah. No, I definitely won't. Um, <laughs> and then, I'll, and then obviously back. So beautiful. Yeah. Very nice. Nicely yeah. done. I'm actually going to um, to some regional places in Victoria. I'm going out to Warrnambool and uh, doing that. And I've got, a, I've got a podcast. So I'm doing the podcast at Beyond the Valley. So I'm going back to Beyond the Valley doing it there. Uh, come back to Sydney for about four days with a friend of mine. who has got a place in Bondi now. And then come back and I actually go up to Mwawa, which is up Mwawa. on... Yep. Sorry, I should probably That's thank right. you for that. That's all right. Um, That's all right. Hawaii? Yeah. <laughs> you going to Hawaii, bro? <laughs> uh, and then headed to Aubrey after that, and then yeah. um, and then back to Melbourne for about five days. Yeah. So keeping busy, and then um, Christmas, uh, I'll do Christmas Day. I go with the club and do the Salvation Army and give back to the less fortunate for uh, for lunch. Very nice. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. It's a yearly thing. Um, I don't do any work. I'll just show up and you know put yeah. plates out and give it away. <laughs> the, the club puts it all together, so yeah. it's a it's a credit to them. And then um, I'll go have dinner at Eddie's house. So That's, Eddie brilliant. Yeah, That's brilliant. That's so. brilliant. Well, ladies and gentlemen, could you now please put your hands together for both Mason Cox and Oleg Markov. Thank you, boys. That was so cool. There you go. All right. So, series of questions. As soon as you think you know the answer, buzz in. I'll tell you two things. First of all, keep your microphone up here because down here no one can hear you, all right?
right? That's the first thing. The second thing is wait till you hear the entirety of the question. Exactly. Otherwise, the person that buzzes in first, you'll miss out, and then the person can get the rest of the question and they can answer it for you and steal the points, and you don't want that. All right, you ready to go, boys? Yep. Uh, Michael. Yes. <laughs> Ben's yep. like, can I go and sit back down? Exactly. Yeah, no. So, Ben... Right? What's going to happen is Oleg is going to keep score for you. Yep. Right? And Michael, Mason's going to keep score for you. All right? So the boys have got the most elaborate scoring system you've ever seen. All right? It's just a table tennis pad. So they're both on uh, zero at the moment. All right? Oh, no. <laughs> Someone's already cheating. Uh, let's get stuck in, boys. Are you ready to go? Here's your first question. How many people attended the 2023 AFL Grand Final? Mike. Ben. Michael. 100,006. No, mm. so close. 104. Uh, mm. He went down. 100,024. Uh, so no okay. points there, guys. Uh, how many goals did the 2023 Norm Smith medalist kick? Mike. Michael. Four. Four is correct. Well done. Oh. Off, off the mark. <laughs> Question number three. Who was the first goal scorer? Mike. Bo Michael. Nick Dacos. Well done. Two points. Keep that microphone up. Who kicked a goal with one minute and 36 seconds left on the clock Mike. in the first quarter? Michael? Uh, Brody Majek. Brody Majek is correct. Hey. All right. <laughs> too old, too slow. <laughs> too slow. <laughs> I'm getting scared I'm up here. <laughs> All right. Who went off the ground with a HIA with four Mike. minutes? Michael? Nathan Murphy. Nathan Murphy is correct. All right. <laughs> Flying along. What did the young lad say to Nick Dacos when he handed him his medal? Mike. Michael? Oh, congratulations, you deserve this. No, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you said that last bit either. Um, uh, that was close, but no cigar. Did you have, have any idea? Congratulations. No, no. no. <laughs> it was, you should be very proud. Um, bad luck, boys, no points there. Who kicked a goal? <laughs> Oleg's not impressed. Um, who kicked a goal after the siren in the first quarter from outside 50 to put the Pies 10 points up? Mike. Michael. Jordan Degoe. Jordan Degoe is correct. Well done. Now, I just want to clarify, how many times have you watched the grand final, Michael? 50. Oh, <laughs> gold. <laughs> Should have known that before you came up, Ben. All right. Exactly. Um, here you go. Oh, You're 13 down in the second quarter with a little over seven minutes left on the clock. Who marked and gold from outside 50 for the Pies? Um, I heard it from the crowd, Steel. No. Mm. It's not an easy one. Ben? Ben? Still thinking. Do you have a guess? Chris. No, oh, Dugowie. Who? No, Jack Chris. Jack Did Chris. you say Dugowie? No, I said Jack Chris, didn't I? Uh, oh, so Jack Chris. Yeah, I can't remember that. It was Jordan Dugowie. No, it was only Jordan. It was Dugowie. It was Dugowie. Sh What's your final answer? Dugowie or Dugowie. Crisp? You're saying Dugowie. Yeah. That's no. Crisp. Crisp. Yeah. Crisp. <laughs> I like it. Even when they cheat, they go down. How good is that? All right. Who kicked, who kicked the ball to Bobby Hill for him to take mark of the day and subsequent goal? Ben. Ben. He's got... Who? Scott Pendlebury. No. Oh. <laughs> Michael. Jeremy Howe. Jeremy Howe is correct. Well done. All right. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here's your next one. Who put you in front with a goal after the siren at the halftime break? Mike. Michael. Jack Crisp. Jack Crisp is correct. All right. There's five, there's five minutes. There's five, there's five minutes, 31 left on the clock in the last quarter. What happens... Who kicks a goal for the opposition to put them in front? Mike. Michael. Charlie Cameron. Charlie Cameron is correct. Well done. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Testing one, two, it's two. Not working. Oh, I like it. Here we go. It's, it's not working. Question number 12. 14 seconds later, the Pies are back in front off a goal from who? Mike. Michael? Dugowie. Jordan Dugowie is correct. Here we go. Question number 13. There is a mark on the wing and a 50, 50 metre penalty is paid. Who goes on to kick one of the biggest goals of their career Steel from outside bottom. 50? Steel side bottom. Ben. Steel side bottom. Who, Ben? Steel side bottom. Yo! Yeah!
Look how close it is now. All oh, right. You're on, one. You're on the board. <laughs> Big comeback coming. <laughs> Only three. Oh, you want the info? <laughs> Here we go. Which Collingwood player kicked two goals and had 25 disposals in his 214th consecutive game of football? Mike. Michael. Jack Crisp. Jack Crisp is correct. What was the last thing Bobby Hill said after accepting his Norm Smith medal? Mike, let's yeah. let's go. No. Mm. Ben. Go pies. Up the pies. What's your final Up answer? Up the pies. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it to him. Yes. It was up the pies. Woohoo! All right. Final question. Oh, it's cutthroat. Uh, what did Brainard say? Oh, all right. yeah, we're it's, it's worth 10 points here, okay. What did Brainard say after accepting his premiership medal? And you have to get this verbatim. That means word for word. No takers? Let's go. He got it! Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are brilliant. Yeah, yeah. No good, no good. Do you know what? Do you know what? They were both so good, they can both have a prize. They were absolutely fantastic. Well done, boys. So, what, what you've just been given, boys, is you've got uh, the, the new, that's good for footy inflatables, all right? It's the new inflatable footballs that you can play with over summer in the pool or kick them in the house. Uh, the other thing that you've got there is a little stocking filler. And then you've got a $100 gift card from Hamper World, all right? So, you can go and get a hamper, similar to what's down here. Um, ben, yours might not be valid, but don't worry about it. Just try anyway. All right, well done, guys. You were fantastic. Thank you for playing. Simply the Best was proudly brought to you by Yamaha and the Big Picture People. They're the experts in home theatre technology. The Big Picture People are located in Hoppers Crossing, Clyde North, South Morang, Cheltenham Water Gardens and the Gold Coast. Thank you very much for playing. Stretching, I like it. Here we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get the blood pumping. Here we go. All right. Here we go, boys. Here's your first question. Do you like running through the banners? Yes. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. What was your thoughts on it when you first saw one? Uh, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I mean, we did this whenever we were like five years old. We had a little paper mache thing we ran through as like soccer players. And I was like, we're grown ass men. We don't need to be doing this. You know, we can stop this at any time. Yeah, right. But I do love it. I do love it. I've got a bit of a, uh, I've got a bit of a, uh, I got a thing I do after I, I'm the last one to run through. Everyone's got to break it because I will hit my head otherwise. Okay. Um, so I go through last and I give a handshake to checkers and then we're off. So it's like a Perfect. little bit of a thing well I do. Perfect. Well done. All so right. I like it. For it. Here we go, boys. The siren has gone. You're trailing by five. You need a goal to win the game. Who do you think has got the ball in their hands to win the game for you? Who do I want or who do I yeah. think? It can be your answer. Nick Dacos is going to take the ball no matter what. So okay. that's who I think <laughs> will have it. I'd rather have Scott Pendlebury have it. Okay. I think it would be my clutch one. Okay. I thought you might have said Jamie Elliott. Yeah, I'm going to say Jamie Elliott. Oh, good okay. point. Yeah, good yeah. call. Good call. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Great resume. Yes. Um, Collingwood supporters are? Awesome. Awesome. Yep. Mad. Mad. Yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah. I love mad. <laughs> you can see how much it suits him. He just loves it right there. Um, <laughs> do you prefer a day or a twilight grand final? Twilight. Day. Day? Okay. Hot. Sun. Yep, yep. yep. Um, you've been reincarnated as an animal. What sort of an animal would you like to be or hope to be when you come back? I'm a giraffe, naturally. Okay. I mean, <laughs> that's not really a question, though. Makes sense. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. What about you, yeah. Ollie? Um. <laughs> we found another sound. <laughs> Go one more time. There it is. Maybe a cricket. <laughs> <laughs> ah, beautiful. Love it. Well done. Um, which one of these things gets you pumped the most before a game? Is it the smell of deep heat, 
fresh cut grass, pulling it on the jumper, strapping on the boots, a footy in your hands, or the smell of, uh, or the, <coughs> excuse me, the smell of leather, or the sound of the crowd. Well, the sound of the crowd for sure. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Do you I'll, eat grass beforehand? Like no, no, no. I had a teammate that did. Um, <laughs> um, the the smell of DP with the combination of the crowd and then like slapping a gluteus maximus like <laughs> 50 times before the game is the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Is oh, it, that gets is, me going. Is it true you have the record for high fives in the game? Yeah, uh, I'm number one in the AFL for high fives. So. <laughs> it's an incredible stat. It yeah. is an incredible stat. I like it. Um, who has been your best mate down at the club since arriving? For Murphy. Right. That's a good one. Um, geez, I've really loved my time with Oleg, but... I think Sorry. Darcy Moore has been the old... You've only been here for like six months. So it's fine. <laughs> Darcy Moore has been the OG from day All one. All right. Very nice. Um, being an AFL, AFL footballer to you is? Uh, oh, incredible opportunity, yeah. really. Yeah. Good. Living the dream. Living the dream. Mm. Love it. Bloody awesome. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. I just got carried away. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> just lighting. It's from? beautiful. From the heavens above. <laughs> I'd like to hear that again. <laughs> Why is everyone laughing? What's happened? <laughs> Very good. I love it. Beautiful. Um, who is a bit tight with their money at the Collingwood Football Club? Pendles. Pendles. <laughs> That's true. He's got kids. He's um, got a lot of money too, though. I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't surround myself around tight asses. So <laughs> that oh, means you're the tight ass. No. <laughs> Just like slapping them. Well, it comes around, comes around. I get it. Oh, it's beautiful. Who likes to get their rig out just a little bit too much at the club? Isaac Quainer. Isaac yeah. yeah. And, and <laughs> fair enough. <Yeah. laughs> I rest my case. I would, too. I would do, yeah. I would do it a You wouldn't see me a short I'll, I'll be here shirtless if I was Isaac. <laughs> Funny, we've done a few shows with him shirtless, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, you've been given the opportunity to do one of the following things. Mm. Parachute out of a plane. Take a hot lap in a V8 supercar, go, go hot air ballooning or swim with the sharks. Which one are you choosing, one or none? Swim with the sharks. <laughs> mm. Lunatic. Lunatic. <laughs> stupid. They're all stupid. Um, <laughs> I don't like heights. I don't like the ocean. Oh, gosh. Um, was yeah. it a hot lap? I'll yeah. have a hot, yeah, V8 hot lap. V8 supercar. Yeah, yeah. yeah good. Bathurst. Yeah. <laughs> Holden V Ford. Yeah. Who do you have? <laughs> Holden. Yeah. Oh. Me too. <laughs> He's not top of it You've today. got him on fire tonight. Oh. Um, what is your favourite ground to play on around Australia and why? MCG, packed out by the army. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. Maybe good. showgrounds is two, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it comes a close second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, playing for the Collingwood Football Club is? Oh, man. Um, humbling, I think. Yeah, good. Yeah, humbling. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah good. Electric, it's just oh, well, words can't describe it. Have, have I got a paragraph? You're not gonna write it down or something? It's, it, it is honestly a once in a lifetime thing, like you can you can't compare it to anything. That's ever. fantastic. I love it. Well said, well said, well done. Uh, who, in your opinion, is someone we should watch out for at the club, and who has impressed you with pre season training down at the club? Um, I love Joey Richards, yeah, yeah. Sorry about <laughs> he's my boy. Yeah, yeah. I um. Yeah. He's been dominating. Him and um, Harvey Harrison, oh, my God. Um, yeah, they're, they're hard to play on right now. So, um, yeah, today they torched me up. So, wow. yeah. Oh, yeah, you did pretty well, though. Give yeah. yourself some credit, mate. Yeah, I did really well. Um. So. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm baby. In... <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm excited to see how they go this year. So, I think they've put their best foot forward. Yeah, I'll, go, I'll go Ash Johnson. Oh, He's, um, he would have had an opportunity if he didn't break his arm last year, I think, to be sure. playing in, towards the back end of the season. Yep. Um, and he's been smashing it this preseason. I think um, given the situation that we're in with Dan McStay, he's yep. going to have an uh, opportunity to do something special this year. Oh, how good is that? I love it. Awesome. Uh, what's better, Mark or goal of the year? Oh, goal of the year. Goal of the year. <laughs> oh. I mean, you're I don't, a I don't, I, Yeah, so I don't take like... either. Maybe celebration of the year? Is, is there something I can do? Um, <laughs> High five of the year. I'll go. I'll go. Mark of the year because how he's had a few. I think has yeah. he? Yeah, no. he's never had one. Uh, has he? Uh, no, nominated, he's been nominated yeah, like five no, times. Yeah. He's never won it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Joe Daylon beat him out by like touching someone in the back and taking him oh. away as well. <laughs> Poor Howie. It was a great visual seeing how his face though after that happened. He was <laughs> pissed. Yeah. Who thinks they are the best dresser down at the club? Thinks? Yes. Murphy thinks he is, uh, but he's, yeah. yeah. Who's no, best dressed? Yeah. Who no, no, thinks, thinks, they are. thinks they are. Oh, thinks they are. Uh, yeah, Murphy thinks he is. Uh, Guinea was one. He, he was a big fan of that. Yeah. Um, yep. Isaac Quainer is very good dressed. Yeah. I will say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say Isaac. IQ. It's a style. Yeah. What's worse, picking up a phone dropped over the fence on purpose or some yeah. kid asking for your boots? For Jeez. me, probably the boots. I'm sorry, but um, yeah, I don't get enough boots. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, yeah, I, I have one that lasts me for two years. So we just got to hold on to them for yeah. dear life. Okay. Yeah, the boots is uh, they're kind of sacred. You you're yeah. getting these things, you know, like you, you like your routines and you like those things that like make you feel comfortable. And the boots are one of them. Like for sure. you have to wear them in. So whenever kids are like, oh, "I want boots," you feel guilty because they've made a big, huge sign. You're like, yeah. "Mate, you're not getting them." Like, <laughs> yeah. They thanks, kill a kangaroo no, reach for one of these. Yeah, like, yeah. There's no chance you're getting these yeah. things. There you go. You're a contestant on a re reality TV show. What sort of a show is it? Uh, I want to do I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Oh, okay. I would love that. It would wow. be fun. Yeah. I would be terrible on it. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm the hangriest person you'll ever meet. So <laughs> okay. I wouldn't be great, but right. I'd be good value. A good viewing. Game show. Um, like what? It's the adventure one. It, like, you travel around the world? What was that? Na na naked in nature? Naked. Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> naked and afraid. <laughs> I, I, I think everyone would need a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. uh, next question. Yeah, moving right along. Wow. Come on, sound effect guy, help, help, yeah. help. <laughs> it's your time. Yeah, it's done. Uh, you find a car park in a. Sh <laughs> you find a, you Cut, find yeah. a car park in a shopping centre. Do you reverse in or drive straight in? Uh, I re always reverse in. Reverse. We both have massive cars. <laughs> there you go. And you also like to get out quickly. Uh, do you prefer to uh, see the coach on the bench or in the box? Depends on the coach, but fly on the bench. Fly okay. on the bench for yeah, sure. Yeah. Very good. Um, question for each of you. Please describe in one word the word that you think best describes each other. Mason, you describe Oleg. Oleg, you describe Mason. Can I use tall? <laughs> Is it one word or many words? Well, we'll go with one word. Just shoot whatever you think best befits him. Oh, I've got a good one. Be one word, oh, mate. Is an, <laughs> is an acronym a word? Is it an acronym? Does acronym. anyone know what an acronym? Acronym, acronym, acronym is a word. Okay. Yes, yeah, 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 it is a word. Okay. Yeah. BFG. BFG, love that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, I'll yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say I'll say energetic because. Oleg, and this is a bit of a side story, Oleg has his locker across from me and every morning he walks in he always has a smile on his face and always brightens my day up. So Thank I've had some dark days over the years or like over the last year and he's always yeah. brightened my day up so I've always enjoyed having him there and he's always put a smile on my face. Well said so. then, I love it. Oh. Well done. Oh. I just said flashbacks a little Britain. Oh my God. Um, all right, uh, just, just, yeah, yeah. That's probably the best one. Um, describe for each other, describe each other's sense of humour. Jeez. Uh, oh. Cue the crickets. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think he's, he's got, uh, like, great is probably the best way to put it. He's, he's one of those people in a, a team meeting that can cut the ice pretty easily. Yeah. And um, he just stands up and just is, he's totally himself. And he just absolutely just everyone's in stitches within like 10 seconds. Love so. it. Love it. I like uh, witty. Very witty, witty oh, for good. Mason. Yeah, very like smart, that. intellectual, engineer. Don't forget that. Mm, mm, mm. Might need a job soon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> write, 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 write your own headline on your greatest day. Uh, go big or go home. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Good. Wait, so what was the question? Sorry. Write, write your own headline for your greatest day. Every day is a great day. Is a great day. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Like it. Um, who has been your toughest opponent to match up on from your career to date? Harry Taylor. Oh, yeah. From Geelong. Yep. Yep. Very good player. Um, maybe my third or fourth game, I went on Tom Scully. And I don't know what Damien Hardwick was thinking, but I think I had to run with him. Um, and... For those who don't know, he's an incredible runner. Yeah. I didn't know this. Um, so he was sprinting around in the first quarter and um, he just wouldn't stop. 
And uh, he did that throughout the whole game. And I, th- I had maybe 12 touches. And I was like, oh, I'm pretty... I had a pretty good day, I thought. But, um, yeah, he had 44 on me. So, 44! <laughs> um, Almost a half century. Yeah. Like, well done, Tom Scully. <laughs> yeah. Well done on the contract on behalf of me. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you would appear on a talent show, what would your talent be? Jeez, I can do the eyebrows. Ooh. <laughs> Bit of Dwayne Johnson, The mm, Rock. It is. Yeah, right. Um, my talent. Keep it clean. If I eat the right food, I'm I'm pretty good with with <laughs> farting and that. So, yeah, the boy, the boys after lunch, the locker room. Whew. I went there. It's All right. right. <laughs> what do you think when you see a poster or merchandise of yourself? <laughs> Who's getting the money? <laughs> Somebody but me. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, I, I enjoy it, to be honest. Um, obviously, nothing extravagant or amazing, but uh, I'd, I'd get very... Oh, I feel a bit like a little head wobble. Yeah, yeah, I'm chuffed. Well, chuffed. chuffed. I like yeah. it. Is there a smell or aroma that you simply can't resist when you walk past it? Mmm, smell or aroma? <gasps> oh. <laughs> it's not your farts, mate. No, it's, not. <laughs> it's not. Um... Um, I, I, I like a lot of smells. Um, however, I hate lavender. So, yeah, I just I, maybe associates me with bees and that, but yep. or crickets. Um, but yeah, I just don't like lavender. Okay, all right, well, that's good enough. Uh, you're elite for footballers. You have to be conscious of what you put into your body. It's eight thirty at night, and you feel like a snack. What do you eat? 8.30 at night. 8.30 at night. Mm. Um, I'm a weird, like backwards kind of person. I'd have cereal. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. know if anyone does this. Yeah, no, does anyone else have it. cereal at no, night? It's like it. a weird thing. People yeah. are like, it's a breakfast thing, but I'm yeah. like, sometimes it's dinner. If your yeah. name's Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. 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 Um, I've got a dehydrator, so we tend to have some like dried mangoes and stuff like that. I, okay. I love yeah. that yeah. while I read and stuff. And yeah. yes, I do read. It's yeah. pretty cool. Good. It's, it's only a new hobby I've picked up, yeah. so yeah. we'll see how long that lasts. What's nice the longest hobby. book? The BFG? Uh, hung- <laughs> Hungry Caterpillar. Hungry Caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> Two last questions for you. What is your reaction when you see a kid with your number on their back? Oh, I get a static. I'm like, this is the best day ever. And I go up to them and I'm like, oh, how cool is this? And they go, it's Brayden Maynard. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that is my reaction. I, I love it. I love it. It's great. <laughs> That's actually gone. Can't get much more better honest than that. That's <laughs> bloody brilliant. Excellent. Oh, man. No, I love it. It's one of the reasons I kept 46. Yeah. For a long time, people have asked me if I want to change my number because it's a pretty trash number. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's a cool thing because I know there's no one else on my locker that's played 100 games. And you get yeah. your name on your locker whenever you've played 100 games. Absolutely, so, yeah. um, there's no one else that's uh, going to have their name on that locker besides myself until I retire. And um, anytime I see a kid or anything like that, you know, I know it's I know it's me. So I go out of myself, I go out of my way to make sure I make it an incredible experience. For Brilliant, the kid. mate. Well said. I love it. <laughs> and here's your last question, boys. On the count of three, don't look at each other. Look out into the audience. But give give me your answer at the same time. Which club has the most feral supporters? One, two, three. Carlton. Carlton. Oh, there you go. Put your hands together, for them, boys. So 45 seconds on the clock, your time starts on the first one. You have to give me the Christian name and surname, all right? Yep. Here's your first one. Time starts now, number 25. I thought you were going to go one. No, oh... (laughs) 25, uh, Jack, Crisp. Jack Crisp. Correct, number 32. Is it me? Yeah. 32's Will Hoskin Elliott, the hyphen. Number one. Uh, Patrick Lipinski. Beautiful, number 28. Nathan Murphy, Beautiful. my best friend. Number 30. <laughs> Darcy Moore, sorry. Yeah, Darcy, yeah, Darcy Moore, Darcy Moore, good, number 38. Jeremy Howe, Correct. lock over room, buddy. Number 41. Uh, Brody, my chair. That would be correct. Number two. Uh, Jordy DeGoe. Jordan DeGoe. 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 That's, that's perfect. Number 37. Uh, Oleg Markov. Beautiful. Uh, number 17. Uh, William Frampton. There you go. How many did he William finish Frampton? up there? How oh, many? William. Ten. Ten. There you go. 
Mate, you finished up Hoops with a score up. of 10. Is that good? No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 it was good, Ava. It was good, wasn't it? You were, she was getting a sweat up over there, so that was, that's one thing you want. Uh, now, Maggie, you're going to be playing for Mason. Mason, can I get you to turn around just so as those Sorry, young yeah. ladies can um, feel like they're, um, well, Apologies, they can yeah. see you. That would be lovely. So you're going to have 45 seconds on the clock as well, Mace. Oh, yeah, right? let's do it. Uh, let's see if we can get through 44 players of passing. Um, <laughs> uh, you've only got a score of... No, I mean, you've got a high score of 10 to beat, all right? Uh, your, your first one will start with your first question now. Number 15. Pass. Nathan mm. Kruger, number 10. Uh, Scott Penderbury. Correct, number 22. Still side bottom. Correct, number 35. Uh, Nick Dacos. Correct, number 40. 40 is Ash Johnson. Yes, correct. Number 18. Uh, Finn McRae. Correct. Number 11. Shooter, pass. Daniel McStay, number 6. Oh, uh, <laughs> Tom Mitchell. Correct. Number 43. Uh, Charlie Dean. Correct. Number 23. Uh, Bobby Hill. Correct. Number 8. Uh, ooh, pass. Lockie mm. Schultz, number 24. Pass. Jacob mm. Ryan, number 4. Uh, Brady Manor. Correct. Uh, number 26. Loud noises, loud noises. <laughs> Pass. Pass. Riff McInnes, number five. Uh, Jamie Elliott. Yes. What was no. it? Oh, you, you, you got, no, you got Jamie Elliott on the last one. No, you can't. It's a draw. 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 <laughs> what? He got it. He actually said it. Oh. She's like invested Don't, in this. Hey, <laughs> I'm not going to give you a house for winning, all right? So it's okay. You're both oh, going to get it. a prize each. That's how good oh, it is. Good. You, both, you both get something. Oh, she's really upset. Oh, I've really done the dirty on her here. Don't be upset, darling. <laughs> <laughs> you got more. Uh, he's cool with it. You'll be okay with it too. I've got prizes for you. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, might give you. Why don't we give you? Um, where's one of those? We get the winner's prize first. Uh, take that. There's an inflatable football. There's a stocking filler, and uh, we'll have another football for you over there, which we'll grab out of the tub. Um, so that can go to one of the girls, and you'll get another prize, which I'll give to you when we go down the back for the signing. She's still giving me the dirty, can you believe it? <laughs> wow. Uh, it's okay, darling. Don't stress. It'll be all right. Um, game's over. We've got, to, we've got other things to do. I've got to get the boys home. Uh, thank you very much for playing. You've been wonderful. That's been, that's been Say My Name. Thank you. What I need to do with you all is just to say thank you, all right? Thank you to all of you. Thanks for coming out and being part of the That's Good For Footy panel show. If you'd like to be part of the live audience at any of the shows that we do, then go to the website, www.thatsgoodforfooty.com.au forward slash events, because it's always better live, isn't it, everyone? If you hadn't have come tonight, you wouldn't have been able to witness what you've been able to witness, so it's best to get along. The next That's Good For Footy panel show will be earlier um, most likely late February or early March in 2024, so keep your eye out. As I said, go and sign up on the page. You'll find out where, when and who. Uh, until then, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year and uh, the best to you and your loved ones. Remember, you can only get your tickets when you're purchasing them through the That's Good Footy website, uh, as I said. I just wanted to now say, before you people all start you know, getting up and walking out on us, um, you're blocking my view with Sam. I just need to say, thanks, Sam. Great season with you this year. Really brilliant. We've ended up putting uh, close to 37, 38 shows together. Um, Sam has been a pivotal part of all of them. And while you're feeling that way, could you please put your hands together for the lovely Sandy? Thank you. She loves that. No. Um, no, thank you very much to, for everyone for being involved in that. Remember to get onto the That's Good Footy, Footy Facebook page. That's where your photos will be. Go on there and sign up. That's where all the information for uh, the shows coming up in 2024 will be. What I would now like you to do, and this is why I wanted you to wait, could you now please put your hands together for Olive Markov, Mason Cox. Two, yes, yeah, stand up, give it to him. Give us a Collingwood chant. Collingwood! Collingwood! Well done. You guys are fantastic. Thank you very, very much for what you've done. Um, whilst I'm just saying it, boys, could you pick up your microphone? Yeah, I got you, yep. Um, first time that I've had the boys on the show tonight. You reckon we get them back again? Yeah! I hope so. We have a few uh, more stories we can tell. I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> um, boys, what do you think? Yeah, first time on the show, microphone and the stage is all yours. No, I loved it. Thank you for having us. Thank you for laughing at my jokes. It doesn't happen often, so <laughs> thank you. 
Um, but no, I, I really do appreciate it. It's incredible to, again, share joy and happiness with other people. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Well done. Can I just get you to... Um, no, it's actually, it's all right. It's all done. Mason, would you like to say any parting words? Yeah, just a massive thank you. We've got an incredible support group at the, you know, Collingwood Football Club. And yeah, it's great to be up here with Leggy, the great man. And he's, uh, he's quite a funny fellow. But a massive thank you for everyone coming out and supporting. And uh, a massive thank you for supporting the Collingwood Football oh, Club. So. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's been the That's Good Footy panel show. My name is Damien. We hope to see you again real soon. Merry Christmas to you all. Have a wonderful uh, new year. And uh, we hope to see you in 2024. All the best to you. My name is Damien. Thank you and good night. Cheers, everyone.